Meanwhile, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. He went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus, so that if he found any there who belonged to the way, whether men or women, he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. As he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting, he replied. Now get up and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. The men traveling with Saul stood there speechless. They heard the sound but did not see anyone. Saul got up from the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand to Damascus. For three days he was blind and did not eat or drink anything. In Damascus there was a disciple named Ananias. The Lord called to him in a vision, Ananias. Yes, Lord, he answered. The Lord told him, go to the house of Judas on Straight Street and ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul, for he is praying. In a vision he has seen a man named Ananias come and place his hands on him to restore his sight. Lord, Ananias answered, I have heard many reports about this man and all the harm that he has done to your saints in Jerusalem, and he has come here with authority from the chief priests to arrest all who call on your name. But the Lord said to Ananias, Go, this man is my chosen instrument to carry my name before the Gentiles and their kings and before the people of Israel. I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. Then Ananias went to the house and entered it, Placing his hands on Saul, he, and he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here has sent me so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately something like scales fell from Saul's eyes and he could see again. He got up and was baptized and after taking some food he regained his strength. Saul spent several days with the disciples in Damascus. And at once, I'm sorry, we're going to go on to 20. At once, he began to preach in the synagogues that Jesus is the Son of God. And this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please pray with me. Lord, your word is full of amazing stories and amazing transformations. As we hear this this morning, Lord, let us hear it with new eyes ourselves. Let our vision be clear and our hearts be open to your word. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. So, think for a minute that you are Ananias. Forget Paul and Saul for a minute. Think about being Ananias. Think about Ananias and and getting this word from God, this vision from God, that you are going to go and befriend this person who has done nothing but breathe murderous threats against you. Think about it as, as having a member of ISIS over for coffee. That's really the essence of what's going on here. Saul was a persecutor of the church of Jesus Christ. What was called at that time the way. It wasn't called Christianity yet. But he had done everything in his power as a good pharisaical Jew to abide by the laws of the Jewish people to destroy anything that stood in their way and that went against their teaching. And that would be the teachings of Jesus Christ in his mind. So imagine that you're Ananias, and you are called by God, by name, to go and do this. That's what I want us to see in this story today. This story is an amazing story on a number of levels. We think of it as the conversion of Paul, or we think of it as the Damascus Road experience, you know, and you might have heard that phrase, to have a Damascus Road experience. And, you know, you see this story about Saul, who who's blinded by the light, who's spoken to directly by the risen Christ and addressed by name twice, Saul, Saul, Jesus says to him. And we hear about these conversions, right? And I know if if you're anything like me, you kind of are a little bit jealous of people that have these conversion stories, right? Right? We, we, go to these, uh, we go to these revivals and rallies sometimes and we, we hear some, a speaker will get up and just talk about their life and how God just 
knocked them to their knees, literally, like he did with Paul, Saul. And the, their whole life turned around that they were addicted to drugs and that they were, you know, involved in, in horrible things and crimes and pornography. And the Lord spoke to them and, and they immediately just turned around their whole life. That metanoia, remember I talked about that repentance. Metanoia means to turn around and to turn away and completely be transformed. And I don't know, like I said, I, I look at those stories and I think, man, I would love to have that kind of a story. We all kind of think it would be really, you know, more impactful to have that kind of a story. But you know what? All of our stories have impact, whether we've had that Damascus Road experience or not. I've learned that over the years, and I hope that we can kind of come to that conclusion together after uh, just looking at this story a little bit more. Because Paul, was, he was immediately changed. He was made blind. His, His vision was completely taken away. And like Kim shared, he had to go blindly with people that he didn't really know into a place that he hadn't been and to be taken care of. And he was at their beck and call. He was at their mercy. He had to do whatever they told him because he couldn't see. And it says that he didn't eat or drink anything for three days. You notice, again, that that three-day thing, you know, we we just heard about a story about three days uh, uh, a couple weeks ago about Christ being in the tomb for three days, Right? in the darkness, and here is Saul in the darkness for three days. He's he's depending on other people's kindness, and he's depending on a word of the Lord to come and tell him what to do. It says here, I will tell you what to do. Get up and go into the city, God told him, and you will be told what you must do. He had to wait. He had to depend on others, and he had to listen for what God was going to do with him. You know, we hear about Saul and we hear about what he was like before his conversion, what he was like before he met Jesus on the road, and he was not a good person, right? He was persecuting the church. He was arresting men and women. It didn't matter. He was bringing them to, to, to jail, and God knows what. You know, jails back then were not the cushy places that they could sometimes be. Being put in prison uh, back then was, was a pretty dire sentence. So he was breathing out murderous threats, it said, and persecuting the church. And we look at that story and we think, well, you know, I don't know of anybody that's persecuting the church like that. Um, You know, maybe maybe these ISIS uh, people that are, you know, so hateful of Christians. But, you know, how does it apply to our lives? I mean, we don't, you know, we don't really have any contact with, with that, right? We don't know of anybody that's persecuting the church, but I beg to differ. I, I think we do persecute the church all the time, every day, with things we do or say. We might not be breathing out murderous threats against people, but, you know, have you gossiped lately? Maybe. Maybe told a story on somebody that you weren't really quite sure was true that maybe disparaged their uh, reputation a little bit. Have you maybe gone out and, 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 and said some harsh words to someone that knows that you're a Christian? There's ways that we persecute the church of Jesus Christ all the time. And it's surprising to me that we, including me, don't hear God saying to us, Sue, Sue, what are you doing? We do hear those words. And they knock us to our knees sometimes. I want you to just stop for a minute and think of any time in your life that you have felt God calling you out about something, calling you by name, asking you why are you doing something. If you haven't heard it as a literal voice, you've heard it as that little voice inside asking you why. Why would you do that? Why are you doing that? It doesn't always knock us on our butt like it did to Paul. Saul, but it's a change, and it's God, and he's working on you and and me just as much as he worked on Saul that day. You know, I noticed that he called Saul twice, and if you noticed in Scripture, that happens a lot as well. If you look in the book of 1 Samuel, uh, when God spoke to, to Samuel when he was a young boy, he called him by name, and he said, Samuel, Samuel, and Samuel answered, here I am, Lord. 
And also in the book of Exodus, even back before that, we read when God spoke to Moses out of the burning bush. He said, Moses, Moses. And Moses' answer was, here I am, Lord. God calls his prophets, sometimes by saying their name twice. But if we notice in today's story, when Jesus said, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Saul said, who are you, Lord? Who are you, Lord? That's the beginning of a very good relationship. Who are you, Lord? What do you want with me? I know what I've been doing, but what do you want with me? Saul, Saul. Better call Saul. That's what I called my... Anybody familiar with uh, Breaking Bad and the Better Call Saul things? Yeah. Better call Saul, Saul. (laughs) God had a plan for Saul. He was going to use him in a mighty way. You know this, this book here uh, that we have in our, our, our pews? About this much of it is the New Testament. And about... About that much of it is written by this guy named Saul Saul, who turned into Paul Paul, and who changed... The world. Think about it. Think about it. We, we like to think that we've got the answers to everything. And if we don't have them, we've got Google. And, and we can find the answers to everything. But the only way that we are going to really ever be really truly transformed. She left a piece of her transformer up there. I'm looking down there, and that poor little, that poor little jet is never going to be a jet again. The only way we could really be transformed is through the power of the risen Christ, talking to us directly, calling our names, setting us on a new path and on a new road. You know, today in the life of the church, uh, we recognize today as Native American Sunday, and I don't know if if you all know that or not, and we usually don't make a big deal about it. Is anybody in here Native American or have Native American uh, ancestry or heritage? No one? You do, Pat? Okay. You do, Gary? My children are all Indian. Okay. Well, other than your children, Gary, and maybe Pat, all the rest of us are just immigrants here, right? We came from somewhere else. We don't belong here. You're an immigrant too? We're all immigrants. But this story, uh, um, last week I saw, if you all have seen any of these lip sync contests that that Jimmy Fallon does, I don't know, on The Tonight Show. Well, he did a lip sync contest with Melissa McCarthy, which was hysterical, by the way, if you go to YouTube and watch it. But, um, But she sang a song from Pocahontas, the Disney movie. And it made me remember how much I loved that movie, first of all, and it made me go back to YouTube and watch the song. What a great song it is. The Colors of the Wind. Do you remember that song? And one of the lines in it, which, what it says is, you know, she's talking to uh, Smith. What's his name? The, John Smith. <laughs> and, you know, she says, You think you own whatever land you land on. The earth is just a dead thing you can claim. But I know every rock and tree and creature has a life, has a spirit, has a name. And then she says this, you think the only people who are people are the people who look and think like you. But if you walk the footsteps of a stranger, you'll learn things you never knew you never knew. I love that. That's a great message. If we walk the footsteps of a stranger, we'll learn things we never knew we never knew. If we take the opportunity to take someone that maybe doesn't look or think or speak like us, and hear their story. We might find out that God's got an amazing part in their life that we never knew about. The people that Ananias had to, had to have go to Saul and, and trust that God was really working in his life, that was a hard thing for him to do. But if you notice in verse 17, this Saul who he once feared, he now called brother when he laid his hands on him and he said, Brother Saul. Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road as you were coming has sent me so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. When we take the time to walk in the footsteps of strangers, immigrants, whatever, people that don't look and think like us, 
Maybe, maybe if you're a Democrat, have a Republican over for coffee. Maybe if you know, you're a Republican, have a Democrat over and show them your gun collection. I don't know. Whatever. Amen. Amen. We can talk to each other. We can talk to each other. We can learn about each other's story. We can be Christ to each other and for each other. If God can call and use a man like Saul, Saul, and turn him into Paul, Paul, what can he not do with any one of us here today or any one that we know? You know, when Paul then, uh, Saul rather, it's, it's hard when you're reading the, in the book of Acts because it goes, it goes from Saul to Saul to Paul to Paul. And the funny thing is you don't actually see exactly when Saul becomes Paul. You see, a lot of us like to think it happened instantaneously. And I've even kind of preached that and said, you know, Jesus changed his name. The benediction today will say to you, I hope that God transforms you, gives you new vision, and changes your name. I do believe that God changed his name, but it didn't happen instantly. And Jesus didn't say, Saul, you're now going to become Paul. It went on and on as, as he lived into his ministry, and he went and began talking to people that were not in the Jewish faith, and he talked to Gentiles and people that were outside of the circle, and he began converting them that we notice that his name was changed to Paul. You know, Paul is a Roman name. It's not a Jewish name. Saul is this good Jewish name that comes back from the first king. Saul meant prayed for. Saul meant a desired thing. That's what the name means in Hebrew, a prayed for, desired thing. And Paul means small and humble. The word itself, the name means small and humble. This Saul who was this amazing Pharisee and had this Jewish background and this pedigree that just went from there to there had to give up that to be small and humble and be Paul among the Romans and Gentiles. He had no credibility, no credentials when he went to the Romans. They didn't care that he was a good Jew, a Pharisee. He had nothing but his story and the blessing of the risen Christ. Paul's humble little name. So what's in a, what's in a name change? Well, for him it was, it was everything because it symbolized his ministry. It symbolized that he was no longer going to do what Saul wanted. He was going to do what God wanted. And God wanted him to go into places that he never dreamed of going. If you read the book of Acts and read all the things that happened to Paul, you'll be amazed. He tells his story himself in, in 1 Corinthians, he was beaten, jailed, right? He was shipwrecked. All of those things that happened to him that he suffered for Christ that made his story even more powerful to those that he shared it with. So if you're feeling today like you don't have a great story like Paul, God didn't knock you off your horse, which there was no horse in the scripture, by the way. That's one of those things, too. You see all the paintings of, of Paul falling off his horse, and there's no mention of a horse, but he did fall to the ground. It did say that. If you don't have that kind of story, I want you to just maybe take some time today to think about what your story is. What road you've been on that God has maybe spoken to you, and it maybe might not have been in this brilliant flashing of light that blinded you for three days, but... Think about a time that God has walked with you, stopped you, spoken, turned something around for you. I guarantee that everybody out there has a time in their life that they can share what God has done for them in their life, what life looked like before, what life looked like after. Paul's was dramatic, and it really is kind of an earth-stopping story, but every single one of us has a story about what God has done or is doing in our lives. So don't be jealous. Don't be hating on Saul, Paul. Worry about your own story and how you can live that out, what God is calling you to do, whether it's in your small little circle of family and friends and it's being more Christ-like, whether it's taking on a new ministry that you've been maybe thinking about that you're a little afraid to put your toe in, but maybe you're, you're, you're going to think about that and pray about that today. We've all got a story and we've all got a... We've all got a road to travel that Christ is wanting us on. And he's with us. He's going to walk it with us. 
He's going to give us Ananiases to, to work in our lives and help us. We have to trust. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for the amazing works that you do in people's lives, Lord. Thank you for the ways that you transform people in such ways that we are just so amazed and convinced and, and can point to it and say, yes, I see that. But Lord, thank you even more for the stories that, that are slow changes, Lord. Thank you for the stories of people that have been following you in one way or another, maybe all of their lives, but that all along the way in little ways and great ways how you have changed their course and directed them in paths that have had impact on lives to come that we won't even know about, Lord. We'll know about it in heaven when we go and, and see the lives that we've affected. Help us to not grow weary in doing good. Help us to not uh, grow tired in ministry, Lord. Help us to, to have fresh joy each and every day because this is the day that you've made, and we want to rejoice and be glad in it. And we want to answer when you call us, Sue, Sue, we want to be able to say, yes, here I am, Lord. Send me. We pray this in all things in the name of the risen Christ. Amen. 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 So we have a chance to continue our worship with our, uh, our offerings of prayers and praises this morning. So if you take out your bulletins and... Um, uh, turn to the inside page there. Now, if y'all have put in any prayer requests last week, they will not be in here. Um, I know that uh, I got some good news from Penny that she is doing better. She did her fourth chemo, and I guess between the third and fourth is the hardest uh, time, apparently, and uh, she's doing well. Her numbers are, are good. Um, I, I forget them at the time, but they're doing really well. The markers are, are, are way down, so... Praise God for that. Continue to pray for, for Penny and for Dallas. Um, they miss us all, and uh, they send their love and their thanks for your continued prayers and dinners and, and all the way that this church is loving on them. We're going to pray for Wilma and for her shoulder. Uh, uh, she broke it a couple weeks ago right here, and uh, so it is broken. We are, um, it's, a it's a fracture. Well, that's a break. Clean, a clean break, a clean fracture, which is a good thing. So she's got a sling for a while, no surgery. We're praying it's going to stay that way. So that we're going to pray for your healing so that bone can knit together in the amazing way that God has created it to do in our amazing bodies. Amen. So we're going to pray for your healing. Um, uh, Bree is here with us, and I know we've, we've been praying hard for Bree and uh, praying for her to, to find an answer and a diagnosis and some... some uh, relief to the, to, the, to the issues and the, uh, the pain that she's been in. So we're praying that the doctors are on the right path and that you are uh, going to be back to health soon in that complete shalom, which is that health of body, mind, and spirit. So even when our bodies are hurting sometimes, sometimes our minds and spirits can still be whole. And so we pray, we pray for that even in the midst, of, uh, in the midst of, of pain and illness. So we're going to lift up all these names. Do we have anybody else that we do want to lift up this morning that, uh, that you know, maybe didn't make it in there from last week that I'm, that I'm unaware of? Anybody? No? Nope. All right. Well, let's pray and keep these folks in mind as we pray this morning and take your bulletin home and pray over them uh, by name. Um, it's a powerful thing. So let's pray. Father God, we thank you that you are our sovereign God, that you are our risen Christ, that you bring new life and hope where there was nothing but darkness and death, Lord God. We pray for those that are needing your healing touch this morning. We pray for, we pray for um, the leaders of this country and in this world, Lord God. We pray for the, the ceasing of violence and the peace that passes understanding to, to touch the lives of those who would seem to prefer to, uh, to be at war than to be at peace. We pray for, um, for those that are suffering addictions this morning, Lord God. We pray for the release from that captivity, that you would break the chains that bind those that are, that are suffering under addictions of any kind, Lord, and that you would set them free. We pray for those that are suffering financial hardships this morning, Lord God. We pray for those that are seeking work or that have just lost jobs or that are maybe in jobs that are not fulfilling to them, Lord God. We pray that your financial benefits and bounty would would, uh, would be there, but more importantly, that uh, the wholeness uh, that comes from following you would help to, uh, to guide and direct people in their paths, in their careers, Lord God. And we do pray for the sick. We pray for the homebound and those that are not able to worship with us this morning. We pray for those that need healing. So we pray for Ronnie and for Steve 
for Jack and Brenda this morning. We pray for Dawn and for Eugene. We pray for Barbara. We pray for Bill and Pat. And we pray for Alice. We pray for Sally and for Becky. We pray for Samantha. And we pray for Alan. We lift up Juanita to you this morning and Paul and Ginny and Bud this morning, Lord God. We pray for Sylvia, for Jim, for Donna and Kevin. We pray for Marie as she is healing from her surgery, Lord God. We pray for Ricky this morning. We pray for Chuck, for Skylar, for Bob, for Dallas and Penny. We pray for Debbie and for Beverly's sister. And we pray for George and for Melvin. We lift up Etta and Cindy, Ed and Shirley. We lift up Love and Dick. We lift up Judy and the Van Sant family. And Lord, we lift Bree to you this morning and ask for your healing. Lord God, we come to you and know that you answer our prayers. We are taught patience sometimes and perseverance through the lack of answers, Lord God. But we trust and know that you are guiding and directing the entire universe and that you care deeply for each and every one of us, that you seek wholeness and shalom and health in each and every one of us, Lord. So help us to do what we can to pray for those that need healing, for us ourselves that need healing. We pray for you to be our healing touch this morning, Father God. Let those that uh, don't know you uh, hear something this morning, maybe something in something that we say as we leave here today and go out into the world that would give them hope and let them know that they are loved children of God. Lord, we pray this and all things in your precious name, and we pray the prayer as your children that Jesus taught us to pray in saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power, and the glory forever. Amen.